So I've been getting this question from like a hundred of people over LinkedIn on my WhatsApp. And this question mostly comes from people from the background of pure software engineering and maybe QE testing and support, right? So all these people from all these domains, they have been reaching out to me and asked me like, how can we move to DevOps or site reliability? Uh, very recently, actually, I conducted a call with a person who, who has like three years, around three years of experience in software engineering, and she wanted to move to a DevOps engineering role, right? So what are my takes? So I j I'll just put up what are my takes. And if you are someone with like maybe a couple of years of experience in QE, software engineering, support, and you want to move to or switch over to site reliability, DevOps, right? So the first thing is gain knowledge. <clears throat> I think by now in like today's time, there's ample of resources available and ample of knowledge available like what all DevOps covers, right? What is DevOps and what all technology it covers. So you should first get, get hands on with all those technologies, right? At least like max of those technologies, if not all like Linux system is very important. So you should be hands-on with uh, system engineering, especially Linux. You should know like one cloud at least, like either GCP, Azure or AWS. If it is AWS, it's well and good because it's like, it covers almost like 70% of the software engineering market right now. So AWS, like cloud, right? One programming language. So if you're coming from software engineering domain, probably you would be working on some software uh, programming. But if you suppose if you're working with Java uh, for DevOps and site reliability, I would say learn either Golang or Python. But that would be easy for you because you're coming from that background. So yeah, so one cloud, uh, Linux, uh, one programming language, and you can pick any tool, say, for example, Terraform for cloud uh, infrastructure provisioning right you can pick kubernetes for container orchestration uh, you can pick uh, what else yeah i think that, that i mean that would be sufficient so if you can like do that i think you are at least prepared to take the interviews right maybe your resume does not have all those things but we'll talk about that in in a moment so once you have the knowledge the next thing you need to do is to have some credentials to basically show that you actually have that knowledge, right? And for that, I would suggest go for certifications. So if you're early in your career, certifications are like, they'll give you a boost and they get, they'll give you an upper hand over the rest of the candidates in the same bracket. So, and certification, which I always tell people to take is the Red Hat Certified Engineer, which is RHCE because it's a hands-on examination and it is a very thorough examination and you will learn some in-depth concepts of Linux. So it, it's a it's a must have for a site reliability and a DevOps engineer. After that, what I suggest is go for either CKA or CKAD, which is Kubernetes Certified Administrator or Developer, right? They are also hands-on exams. So they also give you like good understanding of the Kubernetes ecosystem. So that's, that's another good uh, certification to have and once you are done with these uh, you can take any of the cloud certifications so whatever cloud you are learning all the clouds today offer their bunch of certification aw has its own suit of certifications gcp and azure they both offer their certification so whatever cloud you are learning take at least a couple of certifications from that particular cloud so at least you have the credentials to show the knowledge you have possessed right so that's the second thing and it it looks good on your resume as well <clears throat> the next thing is uh, yeah i mean i know a lot of people suggest that you should build projects yes you definitely should build projects try to build ci cd pipelines try to deploy applications just play around with the technology right but uh, don't just play around it put everything in GitHub or whatever version controlling tool uh, you want to use. Like it could be either Bitbucket, GitHub, GitLab, whatever it is, and put the link in your resume. So for your repository. So if you are doing anything, if you, I mean, for a very long time, I never used to put my GitHub link in my resume. And I learned it the hard way that 
putting up GitHub link uh, in your resume is actually a very big plus and people actually do look into your GitHub account and see what, what you're actually working on, what you're coding, right? So that's another thing that you should you can do uh, if you want to like highlight your resume over the rest of the bunch. So put up the GitHub link in your resume and ensure that you are regularly contributing. It's not like that your last commit has come like three years back. It shouldn't be like that. You should be regularly building, regularly working on it, reg regularly making commits, right? So you should always do that. So that's the number third. That was the third point. Yeah, that was the third point. So all, I'll repeat all the three points. First is gain knowledge. So you should gain knowledge. Uh, you should take certifications. You should put your uh, GitHub link in your resume. And, and one more, yeah. So attend meetups. So, I mean, I actually was very, what you say, lazy in attending meetups. So I used to miss a lot of meetups. And I mean, it was very late. I mean, I think I had started attending meetups like maybe a couple of years back. So for me, it, it was, it didn't help. But I have seen that people who are beginning their career, who are freshers, who are just starting off their career in IT, meetups help them a lot. I see people getting jobs just by networking in the meetups, right? Talking to the right people and it actually helps them. So meetups, find local meetups in your, in your area, right? So you can attend your like the AWS actually has a very big community. So there are regular AWS meetups, Kubernetes meetups are happening all around the globe. Python meetups are happening around the, around the globe. So just find your specific meetup and there is a frequency to every meetup. So try to attend as many as possible. Try to network with people, try to talk to whosoever is the guest in that uh, meetup, right? And it will really help you. It will really boost your chances, chances to get the job. All right. Yeah. So I think that's all I wanted to cover. If you have any more questions, please feel free to comment in the video and I'll be happy to help you out. Yeah. Thank you for watching guys.